Welcome to PA History To Go, a series of videos presented by the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission with funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. These short videos, filmed at locations along the Pennsylvania Trails of History, serve to introduce virtual visitors to our sites as we explore the varied stories that make up Pennsylvania's rich history. Watch them all to learn about the people, places, industries, and events that make Pennsylvania so special. The Battle of Brandywine was the largest single-day land battle of the American Revolution, where roughly 30,000 soldiers squared off on a 35,000-acre battlefield landscape. Our 52-acre park acts as the gateway for interpretation to send visitors and other interested parties out to the various combat areas that make up this large landscape. In order to stop the British advance onto Philadelphia, General Washington comes into the area on September 9th and uses the Brandywine River as a defensive position. Spanning the Brandywine from north to south, are various crossing points, also known as forts. Washington knew that the British had to cross at these various crossing points or else any other access would not be possible. The largest road in the area, known as the Great Nottingham Road, which ran from Kennett Square and south all the way up to Philadelphia and beyond, was where Washington was going to make his stand, and that road crossed at one of the largest forts, at Chad's Fort. This is where Washington is going to position the bulk of his army, anticipating the entire British force moving from Kennett Square directly at Chad's Ford in order to cross and gain access to the colonial capital. What Washington didn't realize was that the British were going to take advantage of his lack of preparedness, as he neglected to guard two of the most northern forts, about seven miles north of where our park is today. Leaving Kennett Square in the early morning hours of September 11, 1777, the British left in two columns. One, a smaller distraction column under the Hessian General Wilhelm von Knipphausen, is going to move directly at Washington's defenses at Chad's Ford in order to distract Washington and getting him to think that the entire British force is directly in front of him. Meanwhile, Generals Hal and Cornwallis and the bulk of the British forces are going to move out on a daring 15-mile outflanking march to cross those two northern unguarded fords and try to complete a pincer movement and come up from behind Washington's defenses. Washington, throughout the day, was receiving conflicting intelligence reports, which told him two different stories. One, the British were directly in front of him in their entirety, and two, the British were actually split, and he only had a small portion of this force directly in front of him at Chad's Fort. Throughout the day, Washington tried to gain a better understanding of the British positions, but it was too late when he got the final confirmation when the British had, in fact, moved across those two northern fords and had successfully gained access and were forming up behind his defensive position at Chad's Fort. After gaining final confirmation that the British had successfully moved behind his lines, Washington had to scramble in order to move three of his major divisions to the north in order to repel the bulk of the British forces coming down behind him. These three divisions moved to Birmingham Hill, which was the scene of the heaviest combat here at the Battle of Brandywine, located three miles to the north of our park grounds. For an hour and a half, the British and American forces squared off as the British charged six times up the Birmingham Hill and the Americans stood their ground strongly and repelled them. Unfortunately, the British were able to push the Americans back from their position on top of Birmingham Hill. And at the same time, down at Chad's Ford, Wilhelm von Knipphausen and his distraction force were finally pushing across to the eastern side of the Brandywine. After this two-front battle had officially commenced in the afternoon, Washington started to realize that he could not overcome. The entire American force was being pushed from the north and the west, and Washington knew that he had to get his men off the field in an orderly fashion. In order to do this, he called upon one of his top generals, Nathaniel Green, to launch a rearguard defense of the American retreat. As American forces retreated east down the Great Nottingham Road to Chester, and in other various spots, to the north around the Dilworth town area, Nathaniel Green stood his ground strongly and prevented any British pursuit from chasing after the Americans. As night fell and the British realized they were tired after a long day's march, General Howe gave the order to stop all pursuit of Washington's forces out of the area, allowing Washington to successfully retreat and escape. The British, in turn, occupied this area for five days in order to recover, care for their wounded, but also to resupply their desperate need for provisions. Although a loss here at the Battle of Brandywine for Washington and the Continental Forces, the more important thing was that the Army was still intact and was able to live on to fight another day. From here, Washington would continue to engage General Howe throughout the Philadelphia campaign before being forced to go to his winter encampment at Valley Forge, 
where the Army would transform into that professional fighting force that Washington was looking for. Thank you.